ಯಸೋದನಾಂದನಾವ್ರಜಜನರಾಂಜನ ಯಮುನತೀರವನಚಾರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಮಾಧವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಶಿಗ್ನಾಥ್ ಬಲದೇ ಸುಭತ್ರ ಮಹಾರಾಣಿ ಕಿ ಕೋರಣಿ ತಾಯಿ ಕಿ ಭಗವತೆ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर जरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास दधो जय मुदीर नस्त प्रयेश अभद्रेश नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिखि हरे कृष्णा एंड गुड मॉर्निंग सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड फ्रॉम कांटो फोर चैप्टर थर्टी द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द प्रचेतास एंड वी हैव टुडे टू वर्सेस टेक्स नंबर नाइन एंड टेक्स नंबर टेन सो आई विल जस्ट रीड टेक्स नंबर नाइन and translation and then we can read together the first ten so nine goes as follows yo anushmarati sandhyayam yushman anudinam narah tasya paratrishva atma samyam tada budeshu saurdam and the lord continued those who remember remember you every evening of every day will become friendly with their brothers and with all other living entities and text 10 yetu mam rutra gite na yetu mam rutra gite na shayam prata samahita Shuvanti aham kama varan, dasye prakyam cha shobanam, yetu mam rutra gite na, saayam prata samahita, stuvanti aham kama varan. दास्ये प्रक्याम च सोबहनम ये तो माम रुद्र गीते न समाहित स्तुवंति अहम काम वरान दास्य ब्रक्याम च सोपहना ये तो माम रुद्र गीते ना ये तो माम रुद्र गीते ना सायं प्राता समाहिता सायं प्राता समाहिता स्तुवंत्याहम काम वरान स्तुवंति अहम काम वरान दास्य प्रक्याम च सोपहना दास्य प्रक्याम च सोपहना ये तो माम रुद्र गीते नायम प्रात समाहित स्तुवंति अहम काम वरान दास्य प्रक्याम च शोभन ये तो माम रुद्र गीते न सायं ब्रता समाहिता स्तुवंति अहम काम वरान दास्य ब्रक्याम च शोभनम ये दोस पर्सन्स हु टू बट माम Unto me, Rudra Gita na, by the song sung by Lord Shiva, Sayam, in the evening, Prataha, in the morning, Samahita, 
being attentive, stuvanti, offer prayers, aham, I, kama varan, all benedictions to fulfill desires, dasye, shall award, prakyam, intelligence, cha, also, shobanam, transcendental. Translation and purport given by His Divine Grace, E.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Those who offer, sorry, those who will offer me the prayers composed by Lord Shiva, both in the morning and in the evening, will be given benedictions by me. In this way, they can both fulfill their desires and attain good intelligence. Purport. Good intelligence means going back home, back to Godhead. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 10.10. Tesam sadada yuktanam pajadam priti purvakam tadami putti yogam tam yena mam ubayanti te. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. One who offers prayers to the Lord to fulfill his desi different desires must know that the highest perfectional fulfillment of desire is to go back home, back to Godhead. In this verse, it is indicated that those who rem remember the activities of the Prachetas, the sons of King Prachinabarhisat, will be delivered and blessed. So what to speak of the sons of King Prachinabarhisat? who are directly connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the way of the Parampara system. If we follow the Acharyas, we attain the same benefit as our predecessors. If one, of, if one follows the decisions of Arjuna, he should be considered to be directly hearing Bhagavad Gita from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There is no difference between hearing Bhagavad Gita directly from the Supreme Lord and following a personality like Arjuna, who formerly heard Bhagavad Gita directly from the Lord. Sometimes foolish people argue that since Krishna is not present at the moment, one cannot take direct instructions from him. Such foolish people do not know that there is no difference between directly hearing Bhagavad Gita and reading it as long as one accepts Bhagavad Gita as it is, spoken by the Lord. However, if one wants to understand Bhagavad Gita by his imper imperfect interpretations, one cannot possibly understand the mysteries of Bhagavad Gita, even though one may be a great scholar according to mundane estimation. Om Akyana Timirandasya Kyananchala Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Sri Kurve Nama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stabidam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamakyam Dadadi Swapadantikam Mandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Pata Kamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha <coughs> Sri Rubam Sakrajadam Sakana Raghunathan Vidam Tam Sajivam Satvedam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Patan Sakana Lalita Sri Visakan Vidam Scha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Rata Kanta Namastude Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhano Sude Devi Pranamami Haripriye Vancha Kalpata Ruptyasya Kripa Sindhu Pya Evacha Patita Nam Bhavane Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namo Namaha Ye Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Atveta Kadadar Sri Vasadi Gura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So again, read the translations from 9 and text 10. The Lord continued, Those who remember you every evening of every day will become friendly with their brothers and with all other living entities. 
those who will offer me the prayers composed by Lord Shiva, both in the morning and in the evening, will be given benedictions by me. In this way, they can both fulfill their desires and attain good intelligence. So, these verses, and especially also the verse from yesterday, are uh, very special verses. They become famous because these are the verses which show us how Krishna is pleased and Prabhupada is pleased if we are friendly and cooperative with our devotees and also with all the other beings. Huh? The Prachetas have performed for austerities for 10,000 years and now Krishna has appeared before them. And it's very remarkable that Krishna is highlighting the fact that they were friendly and <coughs> cooperative among with their brothers. This was kind of the point which Krishna highlighted. Instead of all other points, they were doing austerities for 10,000 years. This is not a, just a simple number to do 10,000 years. But Krishna is highlighting their friendly um, behaviors. Huh? And this is very, I think, remarkable that on this point, therefore, Krishna is pleased and he is ready to give benedictions. And also, Prabhupada, he has quoted um, yesterday's verse and also today's verse whenever he um, requested and supported cooperativeness among his devotees. Prabhupada says, if you want to show how much we love him, we can show this by how much we cooperate, cooperate with among ourselves. I even read one, one statement of Srila Prabhupada and he has a vision and he says that devotees should actually become um, conflict solvers. Whenever there is a problem and conflict in a national level or an international levels, devotees should be known that they are very friendly and cooperative, that people will invite devotees and solve international conflicts. If two countries have war, Prabhupada imagined that devotees should be known that they can solve these problems. This is like vision when Prabhupada has Vaishnavas should become Brahmanas and then be the head of society, give intelligence. And similarly, Prabhupada has this very unique vision how devotees should solve problems in the world. And even, <coughs> sorry for my um, coughing, and even the first point of the seven purposes of, of the ISKCON, Prabhupada says we should propagate spiritual knowledge to what? to bring balance to life and to achieve real unity and peace in the world. And we can ask ourselves, so now Prabhupada has these expectations from us that we can solve and bring peace to the world, but what if we cannot even cooperate between devotees? Huh? So how shall we um, achieve the big task? And uh, it's not and it's interesting that cooperation and friendly behavior is actually a quality of a pure devotee. When we want to become pure devotees, this is a quality which we should naturally develop. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, talked to Sanatan Goswami, he gave 26 qualities of a pure Vaishnava. And it's interesting, quite several points of these 26 qualities, they are related to this cooperative mood and to being friends with others. For example, devotees, they are merciful, they are kind to all the living entities, not just devotees, but to every living entities. <laughs> devotees, they are not defiant. They do not search for problems. They do not quarrel unnecessarily with others. Huh? That's another quality. Devotees are sama. They are equal to everyone. They are not partial. Like Krishna is not partial, devotees are not partial. Devotees, or Vaishnava, is benevolent. He is, he is doing the most welfare activity. He wants to give this Krishna conscious knowledge to everyone. And he is a mitra, a friend. 
It's interesting. That's, I mean, these are the qualities of a pure Vaishnava. That means if we want to become a pure Vaishnava, cooperative behavior should also be a quality that we develop. And we can ask ourselves, why do we see someone as our friend and why do we see someone as our enemy? Why do we have this tendency? And uh, Iranya Kashipu, when he sends Prahlad Maharaj to school, he wants him to learn politics and economics. But Prahlad Maharaj doesn't like it. Why doesn't he like it? Because he understands that political and economical philosophy, what do they have? These philosophies, they distinguish between this is my friend and this is my enemy. And, and Prahlad Maharaj says, even to Hirani Kashyap, to his father, he's speaking, please give up this mentality of seeing someone as your friend and someone as your enemy. Your only enemy is your mind. Others are not your enemies. All are Krishna's part and parcels. And only due to illusory energy, you are covered and start to think, ah, oh, this is my friend and this is my enemy. And this is very interesting because Hiranai Kashipu, he considered Krishna himself the enemy, right? And uh, I mean, this is quite, uh, if we go to that extent, we are quite covered by illusory energy. But not, but Prahlad Maharaj says, if you distinguish enemies and friends, what does it actually mean? Uh, we said, Politics, economics, they all are based on defining this is my friend, this is my enemy. And if we boil this down, we can say we consider someone as a friend or as an enemy based on, on, the, on the circumstance whether they can be helpful or not for our sense gratification. And this is actually, if we boil it down, this is just, uh, if we see if this, if this person can help me for my sense gratification, I consider him my friend. And if he's an obstacle, then I consider him my enemy. And just simple. Huh? It's a true fact. Um, Prahlad Maharaj says this. Of course, this is a very harsh uh, reality, but this is how we choose usually our friends and enemies. And... Uh, Prahlad Maharaj and also Haridas Thakur, which is kind of one form or incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj, is very um, encouraging to see how they are friendly to everyone. I mean, Haridas Thakur, when he was beaten at 22 marketplaces, at the end he asked those who were beating him, are your hands hurt? I mean, who asked this question? And then they say, um, <coughs> If you don't die, my ruler is going to kill us. Please die. And Haridas Thakur, he, I think, on the spot faints, or I don't know, he, he acts as if he's dead, and then they break him. I mean, those were beating him, and he was friendly to them. And of course, this is a pure devotee, of course. Huh? Prahlad Maharaj, Haridas Thakur, they are pure devotees, and we cannot imitate, but we should step by step come to the platform where we are friendly to everyone, every living entity, and that starts first with being friendly to devotees. You know. um, Maharaj Nimi, he asks the Yogendras, what is an advanced devotee, what is a middle level devotee, what is a neophyte devotee? And the Yogendras, they answer, an Uttama Adhikari is someone who sees in everyone Krishna. He sees them a part and parcel of Krishna. He sees them in relation to Krishna and uh, therefore he has he looks everyone as equally. He has a Sama Darshina. This is a pure, most advanced devotee has this vision, like Prahlad Maharaj. But before we attain the stage, we first come to the middle level stage, which is the Madhya Madhikari. And what does he do? He has he understands Krishna is the supreme, and then he makes friendship with devotees. And also, also he is helping merciful to the ignorant, and those who are atheists, 
um, they disregard them, they don't deal with them, but the stage of a Matyam is that he, they, he or she is friendly to the devotees. And only a neophyte devotee, a Kanishta Adhikari, does not know the proper behavior towards devotees. And that means if we don't learn to be friendly and cooperative between devotees, that still means that we are a neophyte. So this is very important that we, if we want to advance, if we want to become to the next stage, we have to learn being cooperative with devotees. And I just brought some um, guides or some um, characteristics of cooperative society or cooperative community. How does a cooperative community look like? And I brought the examples of the Vanaras, of the monkeys who helped Lord Ramachandra. Let me explain why I brought this example. <coughs> In the fifth canto, where the Jambu Tweep is described with all the islands, that chapter describes how in each every island the citizens how they are worshipping a particular form of Krishna. And there is one island called Kimpursha Loka, and in that in that island the Vanaras are living. This is the actually the residence of these monkeys. And they have a very, very beautiful prayer there where which they give to to Krishna or Lord Ramachandra. And uh, I will just uh, read it. One cannot establish a friendship with the Supreme Lord Ramachandra on the basis of material qualities such as one's birth in an aristocratic family, one's personal beauty, one's eloquence, one's sharp intelligence, or one's superior race or nation. None of these qualities is actually a prerequisite for friendship with Lord Ramachandra. Otherwise, how is it possible that although we, you have to understand these are the Vanaras, these are monkeys, we uncivilized inhabitants of the forest have not taken noble births. Although we have no physical beauty and although we cannot speak like gentlemen, Lord Ramachandra has nevertheless accepted us as friends. This is very, uh, I I like these uh, prayers by them because Ramachandra, the Lord himself, when he was searching for Sita, he comes and makes friendship with the Vanaras. He in fact makes a pact with Sugriva. And these monkeys, they are just touched by the activities of Lama, Lord Ram because they are just monkeys. When we bring examples of monkeys, we show them for the mind, this is chanchala, monkeys are flickering, so similarly the mind is flickering, and we, we don't give good examples with monkeys, but here they are so touched that Lord Ramachandra himself makes friendship with them, and it's very remarkable how these monkeys helped Lord Ram in finding Sita and bringing her back, because they could only do this because they were friendly, and cooperative among themselves. And I'm just some, some examples of how they were as a community cooperative. I want to give some points how we in general can also be have a cooperative community in our society. A cooperative society or a community in that in that community, the members will encourage each others to unleash their potential. This is one symptom of a cooperative community. They will support each others so that they can unleash their potential and uh, become those um, souls who are they, they meant to be. And an example which we can in the Vanaras is that Jam uh, Jamba one speaking to Hanuman. They were searching for Mother Sita and they went south and they reached the shores 
and they are at the ocean now. And now they know they have Lanka is on the other side of the ocean and someone has to make the jump and get it. But the thing is, Hanuman is the qualified person to do this, but he doesn't know it. He got cursed. I mean, when he was a small boy, he, did, he got many boons and then he did naughty things, which is why he got cursed. And the sages cursed him, said, you will forget your powers, but when the time is ripe, you will be remem remembered. And the, when the time was ripened, Jamba one explained, remembered um, to Hanuman his true potentials. And this is also for us. We are now, we don't know our true potential. We are co covered by the illusory material energy. We have a spiritual energy. We are spiritual saktis. We have a potential to serve the Lord. We don't know it. So a cooperative society, what does it do? It helps each others to unleash our true potential. This is a sign of a cooperative community. And in this way, it's interesting, Hanuman late big days, Hanuman becomes even more powerful than his king, Shukriva. But even though he got better in power than his king, they didn't start to quarrel. Hanuman didn't think, now I am better than you, so I am becoming a king. And Shukriva and Jambavan didn't think, oh, now if we let Hanuman know his true powers, we are going to be not the number one personality in this member in this community anymore. Huh? And this is very interesting that devotees usually, they should mutually um, uplift each other. And this might happen that sometimes a new devotee might come, and if we encourage him, he might even advance more than we ourselves. But this should not be a hindrance to us not to encourage him. You know? We should encourage him that he can become better than ourselves. And in future, he will encourage us to become better. This is a mutual um, upliftment, a transcendental competition which we should have. Another um, point or a symptom of a cooperative community is that they, the members, they value the effort of the member more than the actual activity. We see when the monkeys were building the bridge, there was one small animal helping. Valmiki, he says it's a spider, and in Kambaraman it's a squirrel, and I like more the squirrel example. <laughs> the squirrel, I mean, these monkeys, they took big trees and stones to build the bridge. And the squirrel thought, I should also help. And the squirrel would go, but it cannot carry these stones. So it would go in the water, make his fur wet, come out, and roll in the sand, so that all the sand got stuck to his fur. Then goes back to the water, and merges in the water, and then all the sand particles will come up and stick to the stones. This is in no way going to help to build a firm bridge. And all the monkeys said, this is in the way, you know, it's not helping us. But Lord Ram, all this was happening, and Lord Ram, even they were building a bridge, Lord Ram was just looking at the squirrel. And then Lakshman asked, um, we have a better important task to do. Why are you looking at the squirrel? And Lord Ram said, I don't, you know, I just look at his effort. You know, he's putting so much effort. I don't need someone to build me a bridge. I mean, I can't jump over the ocean myself. But R R Lord Ram just sees the effort. And he sees, he values the effort of the squirrel, same to the value as Hanuman would do. And this is also what a cooperative community does. A cooperative community, it understands that everyone has a limited capacity and abilities. Some of us can do big things, some of, one, some of us can do small things. But we should not therefore put down those who those do little things. You know, we should value their effort, we should appreciate, appreciate their efforts. This is what a cooperative community looks like. Another point is that 
Each members of a cooperative community, they appreciate each one, of the strengths of each one of us, and can engage these strengths. Si Jagnat Paldev Subhadra Maharani ki, Si Gorani Thai ki. What I mean by that is that in a cooperative society, we would know, the members would know, this person has this strength, this person has this strength. And we would give space and opportunity to that person to apply their strengths and grow in this way. We would give them space. We would not say, no, um, we will not give you this service or so. We will, we will not give you this opportunity to grow in your strength. We will just do it ourselves. No, a cooperative community would give everyone the opportunity according to their strengths. When the monkeys, the Vanaras and Lord Ram and Lakshman arrived in Lanka, they set up their tents, they were ready to fight. And the day before they wanted to fight, Lord Ram thinks, now I should, for the last time, I should send a peace ambassador to Ravana as a last opportunity to stop the war and give Mother Sita back. This is like the last um, option for Ravana to give Mother Sita back, just the day before the war starts. And the Vanaras were thinking, okay, who can we send as the peace ambassador to Ravana's assembly hall and who is going to bring that message? And naturally, we would say, okay, Hanuman, you are the qualified person for that. You have done so many things. You went already alone to Lanka in the kingdom. You came out um, just making a mess there, but you came out. <laughs> and uh, so you should go. This is what we would think. But then they thought, no, 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 we should not do this. Then Ravana would think, in this Vanara Sena, there is only one strong one monkey, one, one strong soldier, and the others are just, um, I don't know how you call them, Mitläufer. <laughs> and then said, no, we should send Angada. Angada is the son of Bali, and uh, you remember Bali is the brother of Shukriva, and they had to kill Bali to get back the kingdom, and Angada is the son of Bali. And they say, and they explain to Ram that Angada is actually also qualified to go to the assembly hall. And he can do this task. He can bring whatever message you have perfectly to this assembly hall and, uh, and fulfill this service. And then they sent Angada to the assembly hall. And uh, that's a very, very awesome thing which Angada does in the assembly hall. I think time-wise I will therefore not tell, but. He just did an amazing thing in that assembly hall, showing who they are, showing what the power of Lord Ram is, showing what the power of Vanaras is. He just did justice to, who, to the real strength of Ram. And this is very impressive that they thought not only Hanuman should go, we should also give other, other, other Vanaras the opportunities to give, to show their strengths. They were Nal and Neil. They were two Vanaras who were expert in engineering, in building houses, and these were engaged in building the bridge. So in this way, we see that the cooperative society, it understands the strengths of each member and, uh, and uh, engages them accordingly. Another point, what a cooperative members would do is that they would forgive mistakes. When the monkeys were building the bridge, Ravana got the news, they were building the bridge, and he already there planned to hinder, to, op to put hindrances for their building the bridge. And he wanted to destroy that bridge. So he would send, <coughs> um, <coughs> he would send his demons to destroy the bridge. And what the demons would do, they would disguise themselves as other monkeys, 
or as sages or whatever, they would go, they would mingle, among them, mingle with them, and then they would destroy the bridge. The bridge would be built halfway, and they would just destroy the bridge. And then the wanderers get to know, oh, these are just some intruders, get rid of them, and then they would start again the bridge. And Ravana would send other demons. They would come again, disguise themselves, and then destroy the bridge. And this happened for several times, till the monkeys understood, no, we, have, we cannot trust everyone, we have to be careful, and uh, who we let in our society. The thing what I want to show is that every time they were kind of halfway through, the bridge got destroyed. And this was due to their mistakes, because they just trusted blindly whoever was walking in. But again and again, they started to build the bridge back. And this is also a very important point for us. As a community, I mean, as human beings, one of our defects is that we do mistakes. Every one of us is going to do mistakes. One of us mistakes will be small, some of us mistakes will be grave. And might have a great influence or a big influence on the community of our Krishna conscious movement. But what does Prabhupada and Krishna wants from us? Even if we get a setback, like the monkeys did, the whole bridge was destroyed, Prabhupada would expect that we start again and build this movement back strong again. This is what Prabhupada and Krishna would expect from us. So, we should start, we should understand that everyone mis makes mistakes and we should then cooperate again to build it back and make it better. Another point is that what a society, a friendly community looks like is that they don't fight over small things. I think this is what we do the most of the times, more, most energy is lost in fighting over small things. My, one of my boss, former boss, he told me, um, we were we have, having a conversation and then we somehow spoke about these old people who would, who would be retired and then they would just look out, they don't have to do anything, they, they have nothing to do, then they would look out their windows and just look on the streets who is doing something wrong. <laughs> and then telling the police. Uh, and my boss told me that every human needs to, and this is not Shastra, but I think it's a nice way, every human needs maybe 10 or 20 problems to face in one day. And if he goes to work, he faces these problems in work, comes home, and he's peaceful. If he's not going to work, then he's searching these problems in his uh, leisure times. And this is like us also. We just quarrel and fight over small, small things while we have many, many big problems to solve. If we would take up bigger, bigger um, responsibilities and problems, we would automatically not, quer not um, care for the small problems which we have. Oh, he told me this, she looked me at this way, and you know, these small things we will forget. And the example I want to give from the Vanaras is that Angada, I mentioned he's the son of Bali. Shukriva and Lord Ram were the reason why his father is death, dead. But how comes that he is working under their directions? Because Angada understood my, his father did the wrong things, Lord Ram is the Supreme Personality Godhead, if I now come with this thing that you have killed my father, therefore how can I obey you? This is just going to hinder my service to my Supreme Personality of Godhead. I mean, Lord Ram killed his father and Angada was ready to forget this and serve Lord Ram. So then we can at least accept from our, expect from ourselves that we forget the small things which we have with devotees and really strive and focus on the big 
um, challenges we have and try to solve them by serving Krishna and Prabhupada. And of course, all these societies, they have um, ideal devotees or mentors or leaders in this community who usually look that peace is maintained in this society. Because you, naturally, due to our modes, we will start for searching faults and start for problems. But we should have also devotees in the societies who then can two parties together find a solution and make peace. Shukriva was this kind of person. As I said, he was expert, which is why Angada was working under his direction. He was expert because Hanuman, who got even more powerful than Shukriva, was still ready to serve under Shukriva. And this is what a great leader does. And another example is what I thought is Srimadhi Rukmini. Here Krishna, or here the Prachetas, they were ten brothers. And Krishna was satisfied they were cooperating among ten brothers. Rukmini, she's the head of 16,000 wives. And to find peace among these wives cannot be easy. But she was expert in doing this. Krishna would try to find faults in her. He, there is the one chapter where he teases Rukmini. I think, I think Narada Muni gave uh, Parijada flowers to, Ruk, to Krishna. Ruk, Krishna gave it to Rukmini. And then Satyabama saw it and she wanted to have a tree, not just a flower, but a tree. And Krishna brings the tree from the heavenly planets. Satyabama is satisfied. Now Krishna thinks what is going to, what is the reaction of Rukmini? But she was just satisfied with just one flower. She just was um, concentrated in serving Krishna and having peace among the wives. And Krishna would tease, in one chapter he teases Rukmini and, uh, you know, try to boil her, but she was always the humble wife who is uh, just an example how um, she was cooperating among the other wives of Krishna. So yeah, these were just some points which I thought um, are are characteristics of a co cooperative community. And we can achieve this only when we understand that we just have one goal. This goal is to serve Krishna. And in Krishna conscious movement, we have the goal of serving Prabhupada and helping him to solve his, solu uh, so, um, help him in his movement. And, uh, Here Prabhupada says that sometimes people say Arjuna heard directly from Krishna so he could understand the Bhagavad Gita. I don't have the possibilities now to hear directly from Krishna so why should I read it? What effort is there? But Prabhupada says if you are connected to the parampara and hear and start to hear from the parampara you have the direct, you have the same um, result as if we would hear directly from Krishna. And we should also understand this. Of course, 50 years ago, living with Prabhupada in this movement is just amazing. You know? I, cannot, I cannot imagine how would that time have been. But even 50 years later, we should not think, that was 50 years ago, now Prabhupada is not here anymore. How can we, how can we thrive this movement? How can we... Um, um, build up this movement. We should not think. We should always be connected to Prabhupada, to Krishna through Parampara and understand what he, the, his real message. And if we put his goal as our goals, we will be com connected to Srila Prabhupada. And in this way, it would be as if Prabhupada is living with us physically and we can bring this movement forward. Sometimes we think, yeah, Surik, you know, this is a small temple, but that country, that has a nice community. Or if I would just can go to Vrindavan and live there, that would be ideal. Of course, Vrindavan is a holy dam, but even if you go there, after a few months you will realize you still have to deal with devotees, whether you are in Vrindavan or in Zurich, you know. Doesn't matter, even in here, you can connect to Krishna 
and create Vrindavan here. I just wanted to, and if we do this, we can, if we are cooperative among ourselves, Krishna will be pleased how he is here now in these verses with the prachetas, and Prabhupada will, will be pleased. I'm just going to read one letter, and then I'm going to conclude. Prabhupada says, we have so much work to do. We, we cannot lose our solidarity. Do not cause a crack there with any fighting spirit or competition. Whenever I hear complaints or disturbances in our centers, my mind becomes too much disturbed and I cannot properly translate my books. So please spare me from such disturbances by cooperating all together, God brothers and God sisters. So if we cooperate among ourselves together, be friendly, then we can please Prabhupada and Krishna and uh, they can then focus, as he said, translating the books and he can then focus also on giving us true wisdom, true knowledge to go forward with our Krishna consciousness and Krishna conscious movement. So thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to conclude. I think we are um, 8.30. I don't know how you do comments or questions. Otherwise, we can stop here also. Thank you very much. Krishna. Кришна говорит, что не тот 
преданный, кто считает себя моим преданным, а тот преданный, кто преданный моих преданных. То есть mm -hmm. Господу ну, нравится, ему нравится. То есть он личность, у него есть мнение, ему нравится. И э, я вчера вообще прочитал такой стих интересный. Э, то есть если мы... У нас определенное сознание, оно очень как бы, покрыто. Для того, чтобы э, быть на одной волне с чистыми преданными, mm -hmm. мы должны понимать их сердце. Их сердце скрыто в молитвах. То есть, когда мы э, читаем их молитвы или возносим, повторяем их молитвы, mm -hmm. эти молитвы э, через какое-то время могут быть нашими. Mm -hmm. То есть, они могут стать нашими. Mm -hmm. Но если мы от себя, ну вот как, как обычно люди молятся, почему они молятся? Дай мне дом, дай мне квартиру, машину, здоровье. Ну, я, я не говорю про преданных, ну, в целом. В целом. Mm -hmm. вот. Но чисто преданные, они молятся о том, чтобы всегда служить Господу. Но mm -hmm. ну, и за счет этого... Если мы будем такие молитвы возносить, даже и, как бы, если это может не от нашего сердца, со временем мы очистимся, и мы сможем понять их, оценить по достоинству, возносить их. Поэтому он рекомендует, Господь рекомендует, да. А к этим 13 кто относится? Я их не помню. Брама, Нарада, Господь Шива, Прохлада Махарадж, Джанака Махарадж. Можно найти сейчас. Шина. Не, ну я же говорю, господь Шина. Вот. Брахма, Нарада, Шива, Четверо Кумара, Капила. Своем Гуама, Прохлада Махараш, Джанака Махараш, Бхишма, Бали, Шукадева Госвами, который Бхагавата рассказывает, и Яма, это Ямарадж. Mm -hmm. Это не сложно найти. Mm -hmm. Спасибо. Вот. И поэтому, как говорится, мы должны идти по стопам 12 Махараджан. Mm -hmm. Ну, часто, что как он говорит, по стопам, идти по стопам, это означает молиться, их молитвы. Mm-hmm. 